What's up, folks? This is another episode of the Sporting Life Notebook Show, Darrell's Pick Section. Uh, and I wanted to just kind of show you guys what I've been up to uh, as of recent. So last weekend, I ended up going out and doing some, uh, some, some clay shooting at Hollywood Farms, as well as running my dogs um, and getting these puppies just on the ground, you know, going through some specific things that I wanted to see or was looking for out of them. Uh, especially them being so young. I'm, I'm kind of starting with a nice blank slate. But in addition to that, I wanted to also talk about some some new literature that, that that's come in that I got coming and and what y'all should be looking for in the future. So, you know, this big joker right here, Alder Fork English Setters, bred by Paul and Katie Cook. Um, you know, he, it, we, we just shaved him down. So he looked like a little Dalmatian actually, but I am actually really focusing on him mostly this summer, uh, getting him up to speed. Um, you know, really, I'm starting to see a lot of maturity out of him, um, and I'm excited about that. With setters, you just kind of got to ride that out, you know, take your time with him. Um, he's a big dog, but it took him a second for his mind to kind of catch up to his body, if that makes sense. He's a, but the, the Joker can find birds now. He, he can definitely find birds. Um, he did really well in Nebraska, uh, you know, and, and he's the dog, the first dog that I've had that's actually gotten a, a point, like an established point on a rough grouse uh, last season. So I'm excited to go ahead and start getting him caught up to speed. He is starting to get ready, um, or we are getting ready to get him steadied up. Um, you know, and start going ahead and, and getting him into the breaking process and going ahead and getting him steady to wing shot and fall. Um, but that's going to take time. You know, I'm going to still just kind of go with it, yard work him a lot. That's why we're out here actually doing a, doing a lot of yard work. But anyway, uh, the next thing at Hollywood that you'll see in this episode is, uh, you know, or in this episode, not that you'll see, but it's, it's in this episode right here. But, you know, in this, I'm also running Cairo, you know, with Joker. So those two dogs, I actually want to see together as my grouse dogs, Cairo being the dog that utilizes a lot more ground scent than air scent as it's seen here, which was something that I did need for my string. I got dogs that, American dogs that just, they wind scent, they keep their, their nose in the air. And, you know, Omar, when he bred Cairo, I mean, I guess that's just, how the dogs are you know hunt down there in that terrain which is great um and these dogs cairo and joker although i have collars on them like e-collars i don't they don't tend to get too far out of my they're very close they're, they're much closer working dogs than my other two that you'll see so the other two dogs are are v and hot boy and i'll talk about in a second but with cairo you know that's really the first hand few handful of times that i've gotten him on the ground running um, and again, he's another dog that I'm just taking my time with. I'm planning on potentially hunting him with a little bit of a different style. Um, doing this thing called roading, which is once I get next to him, once he's on point, you walk up to him, the dog actually walks up with you in the flesh. I'm still thinking about it. Hadn't quite sold myself on it yet, but I'm there. So I'm running these two dogs together, uh, Joker and Kai. And then of course, V and Hot Boy, uh, my two youngest that I got, I'm interested, I was, or I was interested in seeing what they were gonna do on the ground, getting them out um, in more space than what we had uh, at George's. Um, and V ran off. She definitely ran off. Uh, ran so far off that she got out of range of the e-collar. And I'd lost her for probably a little less than a day. Um, and she ended up about a half a mile down the road at uh, our buddy Robert's house, uh, which is cool, you know. And so I know I need to work on her recall and her handling, predominantly a recall, because she wasn't coming back. Now, Hot Boy does something a little different. He's a much bigger running dog, but a trait of the rebel strain of Pointer um, that I'm, I found out was that they, they're very good about checking in, like checking with the handler, not coming back in, but checking like from a distance, looking to see where I am. And I've seen Hot Boy do that a number of times, particularly 
at Georgia's and, and, and particularly here at Hollywood, um, you know, when I, in, in this particular episode. So, you know, that's what I had going on there. And then we do a good bit of clay shooting. Um, so we also do a good bit of clay shooting, um, you know, at his sporting clay stand, which is beautiful. I just love the scenery there. Um, and I hadn't actually utilized it. So I wanted to go there to get some practice in um, and just kind of see what Chuck had to say about his new setup. And I also wanted to try some new Target Loads Fiokis, which I'm a huge fan of. Uh, Fiocchi VIP Heavy 28 gauge uh, shot shells, uh, two and three quarter inch and uh, three, quarter of, three quarters of an ounce, uh, 1300 feet per second and seven and a half shot. Uh, this was definitely something that I enjoyed shooting, uh, particularly out of my uh, 486, my Parallelo. So you'll see it in this episode too, but I actually had a good time uh, shooting there at Hollywood. It was just, you know, just very much so needed, but I'm trying again to make a habit out of not only practicing, but when I get a chance to practice at uh, different venues, right? That present, present different kinds of shots. You know, different landscapes, different scenery, just something else to enjoy. So here also, I want to also show you what I got coming in. So I also want to show you what I got coming in. Ernest Hemingway, the Centennial Edition, the Big Two-Hearted River. Um, so this book came in uh, not too long ago. And I was excited about this one. It was kind of an impulse buy, but every time I can get a chance to get a Hemingway book, it, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna snag it up. Um, this again is just me pursuing a new journey into fly fishing and, and trying to learn and read those stories. Uh, still need to get the rod, got the reel, but just getting myself a little bit more inspired. Um, for those that haven't, cause I'm sure there's a, a few people that have read it, uh, a century since his publication in the collection in our time, Big Two Hearted River has helped shape language and literature in America and across the world, and its magnetic pull continues to draw readers, writers, and critics. It's the best early example of Ernest Hemingway's now familiar writing style. Short sentences, punchy nouns and verbs, few adjectives or adverbs, and a seductive cadence. Easy to imitate, difficult to match. The subject matter of the story has inspired generations of writers to believe that fly fishing can be literature with mixed results. More than any of his stories, it depends on his iceberg theory of literature. The notion that leaving essential parts of a story unsaid adds to its power. Taken in context with his other work, it marks Hemingway's passage from boyish writer to accomplished author. Nothing big came before it. Novels and stories poured out after it. And that's from the foreword of John McLean. So, Ernest Hemingway, Big Two-Hearted River. Um, also, uh, considering... Wait, hey, hey, hey. Joker. Joker. I'm, I'm trying to do this, man. I'm trying to do this, buddy. So, in light of the Kentucky Derby... Uh, I was listening to a podcast, and of course, I had to get what would be a horse racing classic, uh, Secretariat by William Knack, The Making of a Champion. Hadn't read that one. Want to. Uh, just the story and background of Secretariat, uh, you know, written at the time, you know, of the win and, and so on and so forth. So very contextual. Um, and also, I got a podcast coming out with Craig Koshik who wrote Pointing Dogs, Volume 1, The Continentals. So the podcast is a preview of Volume 2, Studying on Pointers and Setters. So uh, the five breeds of, or four breeds of setters and uh, pointers in Europe uh, and over here in America. And I had a contribution to that book, so I'm going to go ahead and say it. When it comes out, make sure that you get volume two. And as, I don't know when, but as time goes on, there will be a set as well with volume one and two. Um, so stay tuned for that. I have a podcast coming out 
about it um, this week. So just, you know, be on the lookout for that one. Uh, Craig Koshik, thank you again for your contributions to the bird dog world. All right, folks, check out this episode of uh, the Sporting Life Notebook show. Those were my picks, and uh, here's the rest of the episode. How far do you want to go? Mm. On the road. Mm, that's a good question. Let's do that. That's fine. Yeah. I don't know. Whatever. Would it, I'm going to just let them go. Yep. This is, this is the route that I take when I walk with the dogs. Yeah. And just, and just kind of let them, let them do their thing. That's a big center, I'm sure. Yeah, he. That's the one I got out of Wisconsin. How old is he? He's like, right, uh, about a year and a half. Come on, Kai. Yep. Go too far that way, you'll find birds. <laughs> Shit. They're up in that. In that little crowd. thicket. Well, they'll find it. That's their job. Those are leftover release birds. I just want them to find whatever's out there. Let's go, Kai. Here come the cat right down the fence line. What you got, dog? No dice. All right. So the cat was coming down the fence line. In his mouth. That's a bold, bold proposition. Good job. Come here fresh. Come on, Fred. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Help. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on, Fred. Come on, come on, come on fresh. All right, come on. Come on. All right, Mr. Chuck, Mr. Chuck, Mr. Chuck. Found that damn dog yet? No. <laughs> we have not. All right, so we've had a, a first of all, let, let me ask. These are puppies now. Okay. So we put four puppies down. No, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> These I'm are messing. puppies. I'm messing with you. I know. But what did you think about the setter and uh, the Ecuador dog? Oh, they're pretty dogs. They're yeah. pretty dogs. It, uh, it's fun, fun watching them run. It's always fun to watch a young dog just learning to get uh -huh. it. Mm -hmm. learning to get it and that's what you want and this time of year you know just to get them out in the woods and mm -hmm. let them feel the briars and smell things that are a little different just mm -hmm. to just to kind of get a taste for what the what the woods are like that's what you're after yeah yeah so we got we got those and those are gonna be my grouse dogs mm -hmm. so is 
clearly they hunt like they should and they stay in the area. Yeah. Otherwise, the other two won't do that. <laughs> we won't talk about that. We won't talk about that. Okay. But what I want to talk about, though, um, is the clay shooting opportunities that you have here at Hollywood Farms. Well, right now, yeah, right now, Darrell, just like everything, it, you, you have to be, you have to grow slow, and that's what we're doing. We're growing mm -hmm. slow. So uh, last year, we took what was something really simple, which was three throwers, mm -hmm. and expanded it to now we've got nine, and a bunch of them are mobile throwers, so we can do some different things with them. We can set it up. But we partnered with uh, uh, some folks to do shooting schools here, We've got some really great shooting instructors. Uh, myself and my son Michael are both going to be certified as level one instructors this summer. Yeah. But uh, and I've taught people how to shoot all my life. Yeah. And we put in the three throwers that we had for our own use, but also when we had guests to to bird hunt. Right. For me to be able to make a quick assessment, who have I got? Okay. Can they handle a gun? And do they know what they're doing with a gun? And will they hold a gun in a proper position? Mm -hmm. If they're not shooting, is the gun going to be unloaded? Those are the kind of things from a safety perspective. If I don't know my guests, I won't be able to see. So for 18 years, that's all we did with our little three throwers and little little stations that we had. Right. But when we started working with some folks talking about doing a shooting school uh, on, a, on a more intense level, obviously we need more presentations. Right. So the first thing we wanted to do is develop what we're standing in right here, which is just a little simple five stand. It's not finished. It's still rough. It's got you know a lot more work that we want to do with it. But our aim is not to blow you away with what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Our aim is to educate and equip shooters and hunters, right safety, right gun handling, right gun mounts, right assessment of the target, right acquisition of the target, and then hopefully the right, the right, you know, successful shooting. Cool. And we've seen, we've had three shooting schools now here that have been tremendous, yeah. every one. The last one was probably the most successful. Mm -hmm. Because of the people that we had, we had three women, two men, and, uh, and the three women were delighted. Yeah. From beginning to end, with what they learned and with what they saw. And again, this is just a real simple five stand presentation. It's not huge, it's not complicated. We've got a left to right, a right to left, a wobble, a rabbit, and a target coming over and a target going up. So it's just a real simple uh, six station, six throwers on a five stand. Then on the other side of us over here on the pond, we'll move the mobile throwers out here and we can simulate ducks. Okay. So you've got doves and quail on this side, or grouse or woodcock or whatever, teal. And then we can do mallard setting right. on the pond. Okay. And that's a totally different shot, and so we, we like, to, like, to, do like to do that. And then you have a quail walk. Yeah, we call it a walking quail course. Uh -huh. uh, it's, it's, it's simulated quail hunting, but not with birds. So yep. obviously we're a quail uh, preserve, and we can hunt quail from October 1st until the end of March. But after March, you know, we're done releasing quail commercially. We'll still, you know, play with bird dogs from time to time, but that's it. We we developed up the hill. We call this place Doc's Pond. Yep. I'll tell you why we call it Doc's Pond. Mm -mm. You didn't tell me that. Okay, well, Doc's Pond came from the fact that, you know, it's, a, it's about a three-acre lake here, pond. And and every, whenever I was go to town, somebody would say, Hey, Chuck, can I go fishing down at Doc's Pond? This is where they wanted to come uh, fish. Okay. It's a good little fish pond. Okay. But, uh, but it just kind of never had a name other than Doc Pond. Doc's Pond. pond. My yeah. father was a doctor, and so. And you know, that's just what it is. just what it is. So, Doc's Pond shooting ground, just after you turn in at the sign, we've got trails mm -hmm. mowed through the pines. And we can move these mobile throwers up there. And we walk in, simulate a bird flush, or simulate a point, and you know, the hunters have got to be ready. They've got to be safe with the guns. They don't know where the bird's going, as opposed to out here. Right. Every you target goes the same fly. way. We can set that up any way we want to. And so over the summer, we're going to put in at least three and maybe more throwers that okay. we'll, we'll have mo mobility to, to move around uh, up there on the shooting ground. So right now we can move, we can move four up there, but hopefully we'll get seven or eight. Cool. Where you can, you know, over a in about a 
15, 20, 30 minute period, you can get different presentations mm -hmm. of different birds and assess a shooter's skill in acquiring the target and successfully mounting and get killing that. the target. I think that's good. So my last question for you, then we're going to get to shooting. What has been like, is, is there, is there an opportunity for people that want to come to Hollywood to say, maybe get practice during the season, get practice here beforehand, and then immediately go to the actual hunt? Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. We do that uh, with our, we have a number of corporate events here okay. where we'll bring a, a group in from Atlanta or Macon or in one case, uh, Savannah. And, and one, well, and one group from Pennsylvania came down and they spent an afternoon shooting clays yeah. and the next morning they, 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 they hunted birds and, that and, was a, a good and thing. it was a good thing we shot clays in the yeah. afternoon because one of those guys didn't have a clue. <laughs> but that's okay. yeah. Well, that's okay. why we're here to learn though. But and was, that's why we're here. It was a lot of fun to watch him when he finally did get a bird the next day. He was so Happy. thrilled. Mm -hmm. And, you know, without a place to practice, it makes a difference. So for a, for a quail hunt or if somebody during the off season just wants to come and shoot, mm -hmm. we aren't, we haven't been marketing this at all mm -hmm. yet, but over the summer, we're going to do at least, I talked with one of my instructors today and I think we're going to do at least two shooting schools, maybe as many as three or four once Michael and I get certified. But, uh, We'll, we'll do a couple, three shooting schools, and I'd like to do some overnight events with fathers and sons okay. uh, and, uh, and and do some more fun things. Um, just a little side thing. I brought, yeah. I brought a group of college students down here. I say I brought. They came from uh, the University of South Carolina, all girls, 18 of them. Mm -hmm. I think out of the group, two of them had shot a gun before. And one of them, it was so cute, when she finally hit a target, she turned around and held the gun. She looked at me, she said, I have got to get one of them. <laughs> yep. And so I got yep. a text from her the other day. She said, guess what I'm getting for graduation? She's getting her first gun. She's getting her first shot. She said, what's she getting? No, she didn't. She okay. Didn't. She didn't. Okay. And I, you know, I don't know whether it's going to be a Beretta or what, but she, she, she actually was shooting my Beretta over and under. Really? Like 87. Okay. And, uh, and she, she just was, I've got to get one. Of them. So <laughs> that's, yeah. that's the, that's the joy of it. Yeah. And so the shooting schools we're going to do this summer, hopefully we'll be with a lot of young people, but maybe some men too. And, and, and even women, I, I, the, the, you know, the women's aspect of shooting is fastest growing part of the industry right mm -hmm. now. And so, uh, that's what I've been reading anyway. Right. So uh, we think that we've got a lot of opportunity. The house up here, you've been in, you've, you've seen it. Fantastic. It's, it's, it's my sisters have done an amazing job on mm -hmm. that place. And and I learned about uh, what is it that uh, the the chocolate dirt is how she described it. That's what she called it. <laughs> <laughs> the, the good kind of dirt. Jungle growth or something like that. Right. Yeah. Right. But y'all actually have. I mean, just the work that you guys have done. You know bringing the house up and getting it ready for people gardens and gardens everything. and everything i mean y'all are a hell of a team dude well it's gonna be fun yeah it's, it's a lot of fun doing it so not only can you shoot you can come here and look at really really nice vegetation and you get a whole history of conservation and piney woods because exactly. you are my long leaf pine go-to well, expert i don't know about that but i didn't show you we first thinned the stand of long leaf pines this year and that's gonna be pretty oh i gotta see that and i set out uh, four or five corners uh, yeah. fields when we first did it we cut it we clear cut some corners for wildlife habitat okay and uh, so that's gonna be you gotta show me that that's man. gonna be a fun project let's do it all right well let's get to shoot man I love it I let's love do it, it. What you want, four just to start? Yep, let's go to four. Pull. Pull. All right. You're 100%. I'm 100% for right now. Well, let's see you shoot a rabbit then. <laughs> let's see you shoot a rabbit then. Shooting a rabbit. 
Pull. Dang. Both times. Let's try that again. <laughs> I don't like that thing. It's not you shooting low. Right. Pull. There we go. Pull. We go. There you go. All right. All right. Two is going to come right out over your head. Okay. It's going to kind of go just to the right of that three. Out. Pull. Pull. Uh oh. And then six is a right to the left. Pull. 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 All right. All right. Remember, I can actually remember shooting a rabbit and a covey of quail getting up. So this is this that's is it. Realistic. Let's do it. All right. Pull. Whoops. Rabbit got away, but the quail died. Got some. Look, we got, we, we got something in the bag. <laughs> Pull. Pull. Behind it. You're doing good. All right. Let's do some report pairs. All right. Pull. Woo. <laughs> My eye was like, what are you doing? All right. Now we're going to pull. Pull. Dang. Need that third shot. I need that third shot. <laughs> Pull. Kind of going off to the left. Supposed to be more vertical. I was in, I was anticipating vertical. <laughs> folks and be sure to check out the link below uh, and check out Beretta USA make sure that you get the latest and greatest in apparel and gear from Beretta USA um, use my promo code TSLN15 get yourself 15% off I just got this new shirt from them you know Beretta team type stuff um, but yeah check out Beretta USA um, I want to also encourage you guys to go and customize your next knife at Benchmade Knife Company. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of the bug out. They got a mini bug out and a just regular full size bug out. So check those out. You can customize that. Um, and you can do a sporting dog for keeping these little jokers fueled up and ready to go. Even though we ain't hunting right now, you still got to keep them in shape. So I have moved down from 3020 to 2616. So check it out. All right, guys, thank you all again for listening, and we will see you all next time.